Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Enigmatica 2 Expert. Now, I hope you guys had a wonderful weekend. Uh, I was busy, of course. With holidays coming up, it's like always busy. Um, over here, I did make the rest of these mob duplicators. No biggie. You know, we spent last episode working towards those. I am also added a chunk loader here from IC2 to kind of chunk load some of this stuff. That's the main thing. That's the main thing since last episode. Um, and well, and then I did a little bit of building here and there. Oh, and I automated. I automated some things. Uh, if we pop up here to the AE2 area, and uh, I've had a bunch of comments lately about reducing lag, and um, I did want to address that because I seem to be getting a lot of comments about that. And I know about how to reduce lag, and I've been doing it. Um, our TPS is generally at 20 TPS. It's not lag, like a constant lag that's the issue. It's just after a world has ran for a while, it starts consuming more memory, and so what happens is every time it dumps memory, um, every time it has to dump the memory, there's a big lag spike, and you know, it gets increasingly noticeable. So it, it's nothing that I can just reduce, you know. Um, it's just world size and stuff like that, so it would require basically resetting the world. Um, you know, it's something you can do with MC Edit. Uh, it's not too difficult, I know that. Um, but it's not something that I can just, you know, I had comments about compact machines and stuff that's not going to change anything it's not going to fix anything so i just wanted to address that really really quick but i did spend a little bit of time automating lots of different item ducks um, and combination ducks and i also automated up to the cryo stabilized flux ducks um the empty ones not the field ones because we do have to teach you how to do that which we're going to be doing that here soon that's infinite power transfer it's wonderful it's wonderful stuff so i did automate some of those things um also i had a comment about the the silver dust recipe i fixed that so, uh, if we take a look here, it now, eight silver ingots makes eight pulverized silver. I had it as one ingot makes eight pulverized silver. So, thank you very much uh, for the comments regarding that. Okay, but um, anyways, today what we're going to be doing, I do have a few things here, and we're going to be making, or I'm going to be getting some more stuff between uh, throughout the episode. But we are going to start on the experience system for this. Um, I also added a little teleport here to the mob farms. Um, also, part of the lag is just due to my internet connection acting up. Or, you know, the like that you guys are seeing. So, um, But anyways, I did add a drawer right here. We're going to be using that. And uh, I've started kind of decorating a little bit in here. But um, We do have some cloches, some garden cloches. We're actually going to go ahead and just set these up. And I think what I'm going to do, let me pull up a little bit of this stuff here. Okay, I think what we're going to do is we're going to have... Let's see, we can pump in power there. We can pump in water there. We can pump out items there. And so I think we're going to have our cloches set up like this. So that all the cabling and stuff is behind us. Or behind it. Um, you know, from where we're going to be looking at. Um, we're going to set up four of those. And then the next thing I want to do is let's get ourselves an XP drain. You know, we talked about that before. Um, also, we're going to go ahead and get a faucet. Um, or a shower. So an experience shower. I want one of these. Uh, I don't know if we'll use it right this second, but we are going to be setting up one of those. I also want to get, uh, for right now, we'll just get a lever. There we go. And then let's get ourselves an ender tank. And then let's just grab this infinite water source here. This stuff's going to get moved here very, very soon. Um, and then I want to go ahead and get, let's see, we're going to be pumping water in, items out. Let's get ourselves a couple servos. Let's get... Uh, fluid ducts, let's do, we're going to do the signal and plated fluid ducts, the opaque versions, um, because they can transfer 4,000 RF per tick as well as fluids. Uh, they can move fluids as well. So let's just get like 10 of those. Actually, we'll get 24 because there's a couple places that we're going to need them at. Um, and then we're also going to need some item ducts. And in this case, I can just use just standard like the impulse item ducts. Um, I'm just going to get like 10 of these. Um, I don't need to use any of the combination ones because we're going to use this one here to move the water and the fluids. This one here to move the items around. And then let me get some more servos. Let me get uh, like three more of these. And we'll just pop down to the mob farm system. And what we're going to do, the uh, these right here that move the fluids and the redstone flux. Go ahead and open this up. We'll go ahead and just run these along. And I'm actually curious if they could somehow, since they're multi-purpose like that, 
I'm wondering if there's some way, let me do that. If I put this like right here, I don't think it's going to work like I want it to because water normally has to be put into the bottom. But let's see. Okay, yeah, it's not working. That's fine. I didn't think it was going to work, but <laughs> I wanted to make sure. Um, okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to run that out. Um, it's going to, let's see, we're going to run this out along through here. Is that what I want to do? No. Okay, and we're going to run these out along like that. And we're going to put down an infinite water source setting there. Uh, we'll put a servo on there. We're going to say that you can extract. Then we're going to put down a power cell that's going to sit right here. And we're going to bring these down like that. Uh, if we set this to, let me toss that in there. And we're going to say output. It should automatically output to that. Actually, this may not even need the servo. Because those should auto output. But... <clears throat> if we take a look, these garden cloches, they do have power at the moment, 16,000 IF. And then if we bring, let's see, let me bring this around like that. And we bring that along like so. There we go. It's getting water. Perfect. Okay, so water and energy is in this. And then we're going to have to extract items, um, which we're going to dump them into this frame drawer. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run this. Uh, let me grab my wrench. And we're just going to run this along like that. And I think, actually, I think each of these will need a servo for them to pull out. Um, if I recall. So, because I seem to remember setting these up. And, uh, like, if you use conveyors, conveyors auto-pull out of them. And they're kind of made for conveyors. But uh, other item transfer, you'd have to extract on that. So, we'll go ahead and just pull those out. Or have it pulling out. And that's pretty much it for the cloche system. Um, then we're going to have to cover the drawer system here in just a second, what we're going to do with that. But let's go ahead and dig back in here. And we have this power cell sitting right here. I'm going to connect up signal and plated fluid ducts to this. We're going to have to move fluid and items um, over in this direction. So let's uh, dig around here. And I'm going to make sure this area underneath here is filled in because it can spawn mobs below it. We don't want that to happen. What we're going to do is we're going to run signal and plated fluid ducts just down along behind this is what we're going to do. So like that. I'm going to need some more of these. And it's going to pump fluid and it's going to pump power through this. So like right here it's going to pump fluid and power into the mob duplicators and power into the mob crusher is what it's going to do. And then what we need to do is... Let me go get some more of those real quick, actually. Okay, so let's just run this out. Um, let me remove that for just a second. Okay, this is going to come out. We're going to have that sitting there. And it's going to... Basically, basically just connect over like that. Okay, so these all should have power. They're getting power. That's great. Good, good, good. And then the mob crusher should also have power. It does. Okay. It looks like this has ran maybe off of bats and stuff while it was just sitting here. Because mobs do sometimes cross through here. So I bet that's what happened is bats flew into it. Okay. So anyways, this can move fluids now. Okay. And then what we're going to do is let's set up. Uh, let's see. How do I want to do this? Let's see. We're going to have... Uh, Impulse item ducts sitting right there. It's going to pull items out of that drawer. And servo right there uh, that can pull items out. Um, we're going to do a little bit of redstone control with this. I'm just not sure exactly how I want to do that just yet. And then what we're going to do is we're going to have a mechanical user that's going to sit right there. And so it can pump items into the mechanical user. We're going to say um, use, or I'm sorry, generic click, right click, upper left slot only. And let's do, we'll get a little bit more uh, cobblestone, which I can just, or stone or, you know, whatever. Let's do that. Because that, that all has to be changed over anyway. So. Um, okay, so that's going to use items. And then what we're going to do is let's pop up here. 
Okay, and one thing I want to make just really, really quick is if we take a look at mystical agriculture. We're actually going to start moving into a little bit of this today. We're going to make ourselves a solium dagger to use to obtain mob chunks. Um, we're going to need a mystical stick, which does require some prosperity shards. These are craftable uh, right here. Okay, the prosperity shards. Let's make that. We are going to need a rock crystal. I've got a few in here. Let me get... Uh, oh, that one's kind of dinky. We'll take that one. Okay, so there's two blocks of prosperity. And then we'll just break these down. There's 18 prosperity shards. Okay, so the solium dagger. Back to this again. We're going to get our mystical stick. We are going to get our solium ingots. And these do require that we make solium dust, which is made like this. Uh, soul dust is soul stone that's been smelted. And you can craft uh, soul stone like this. So let's get ourselves... Uh, there's 64. That should be fine. We'll go ahead and just... Uh, Toss this into a furnace, get that smelted up. And then we're going to need to get some essence. We do have some Inferium Essence. We're going to get this stuff up and going here soon. And I do have an Infusion Crystal, so let's grab that. And what we're going to do is just do like that. We'll get ourselves uh, a bit of Prudentium. You can see that is taking durability damage. Uh, we're down to five uses. There's, okay. We've got four uses left on this. What we're going to do, I thought I had more essence than that. Which kind of puts a, <laughs> a little bit of a damper in my plan. We may have to do a little bit more um, mystical agriculture than I was expecting this episode. But Okay, but let me grab this powered diamond anvil. And what we'll do is we're going to set this up like right there. And we'll drop that into there, and we can restore the uses on it that way. So. Um, oh, no, I won't have to do more. I won't have to do more. Never mind. I've got more essence. <laughs> okay. I'll show you. Um, our solium dagger, our solium ingots, our solium dust. We're going to need two of these. And we'll just run this through an electric furnace. Yeah, we probably will end up automating that stuff at some point. I think this is actually used for the uh, the top tier ingot, maybe? No? Seed reprocessor, but... Ooh. Like, I never even used those things. It's actually not used for much at all. We'll see. Maybe there'll be a use that comes up. But anyways, we can get ourselves our Solium Dagger now. Oot. Okay, I and mean, you can enchant this and stuff. I'm not going to worry about it right this second. Okay, so now that we've got that, the next thing I want to do is let's get ourselves, um, if we take a look at industrial foregoing these mob imprisonment tools, let's just grab this. And let's go ahead and make ourselves um, a mob that we're going to want. We want to make a, um, I'd like to get blizzes up and going. And we can do so with one of these freezing dolls, so we have to make a barrel of pyrothium. Alright, so let's get ourselves just a stone barrel. And our pyrothium. I've got four. I can make a bucket of that. So what we're going to do, let's melt this stuff down. Um, inside of this magma crucible. Grab ourselves a bucket. Toss that in there. Oops, I lost it. <laughs> and there is our bucket of blazing pyrothium. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our stone barrel, we're going to set this up like, right here's fine, place that in there, and we're going to drop our freezing doll into there. Okay, we right click it. And you can see it's spawning. Uh, the percentage is going up there. So we're going to wait uh, for it to spawn a blizz for us, and then we're going to capture said blizz. I'm actually going to take these buckets and dump them into there, dump that into there. That. Oh, and by the way, if you were curious, the uh, last episode, you know, we did that rosin. We have 2048 on that. Didn't take very long for it to cap out. And there we go. There's our blizz. So we're just going to right click, capture it, and we have a blizz inside of that now. And you can do that for pretty much all the, like, altered blazes, as well as a blaze and a lot of other mobs. There's different, um, different little dolls that you can use. With, um, I think it's usually blazing pyrothium, but... Um, and then we're going to come over here and let's, uh, i tell you what, I'm curious to see if this would still, will it still run power if I say, 
pop a servo on there. And we're going to set this to uh, paused, or actually we'll say active on on uh, active on redstone signal. But we're going to go ahead and say enable, ignore, and it should start pumping out fluidescence. Yes, great. And I think it should still be able to pump in power. That's what I want anyways. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to take our mob imprisonment tool, just pop it into there, and you can see it just spawned a blaze, uh, blizz for us. So we'll take our solium dagger, and we're going to go beat it to death. Yeah, there's not enough essence in there. Um, there is a chance, it's like a 10% chance that we're going to get a mob chunk. And I think, I think whenever you put fortune on it, I think it does increase that. Um, but anyways, I'm going to drop my XP drain down and stand atop this tank here for just a minute, because we are going to have to jumpstart this system. But we're after experience chunks, and you'll understand why here in just a moment. Um, and one thing I am going to have to do, we are wanting to make essence. That's what we would like to make. This right here from Industrial Foregoing. We're going to need to make ourselves a fluid dictionary converter, which isn't very expensive. Um, and I'd also like to fill up this tank with XP. So let's pop up here. Let's go ahead and get the fluid dictionary converter. There's that. Easy as pie. Okay, there's there's eight th or eighty thousand in there, so that should actually probably be enough, I would think. Um, so what we're gonna do? Let's take our fluid dictionary converter. We're gonna put this setting. Uh, where do I want to put this? We'll have right here is gonna set a vacuum hopper from open blocks. And then we'll have the tank setting there, and then we'll do our fluid dictionary converter can be kind of out of the way, you know. We can have it sitting right here, that's fine. Um, fluid dictionary converter, we're going to say, let's see, let me grab one bucket of this. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this, um, we're going to go ahead and put that into there, and you can see it says fluid XP, we're going to say that. Uh, liquid XP, and we are going to change it to, nope, uh, Essence Buckets. What you should do is shut this thing off before you use it, <laughs> so just a heads up. Um, let's go ahead and we'll just run these along like that, and I'm going to say, you can pull out. Okay, what we wanted to say is Liquid XP makes Essence Buckets, and we'll go ahead and say Always Act. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll just add that right to there. So you can extract always active. And it should pull this out and dump it into our mob spawners. And there we go. We got another Belias. And we'll just kill that real quick. Uh, no mob chunk. That's fine. Once the system's up and going, it should be plenty of, uh, plenty of essence. So. Um, okay, so let's grab this really quick. And we're going to put this in setting, let's see, we'll put it in setting right there. Yeah. And then we're going to have a, a vacuum hopper that's going to sit right here. And let me go ahead and disconnect that. Vacuum hopper is going to feed its liquid up there. Okay, so it's going to go up into the portable tank. That's all it's going to get is liquids. Let me grab that. I don't think we're going to need that anymore today. At least I don't think so. And then we're going to take and we're going to run this over. This is going to go right to there. And let's see. Let's attach a servo and extract. Okay, so it's going to start dumping this in and making essence. So we should see Blizz is getting spawned. And then what we'll do is we'll just kill these. And what we're looking to get is mob chunks. There was one. These exp or these experience chunks is what we're after. Not necessarily mob chunks. But. And they're about, yeah, they're a 10% drop chance. There's another one. Um, in my experience, they tend to be a little bit more common than 10%, but 10% is what they're registered as. But RNG may be just friendly to me, usually. Okay, so I just got the last one that I need. I'm going to set this to active on redstone signal. And I'm actually going to go through and add all of these to active on redstone signal. 
because we actually want these. We're going to set up a redstone system for this. But you can see these are pretty well all filled out with mob uh, with mob essence. It looks like it's emptied it out. This one hasn't quite gotten any yet. But that's okay. This one's gotten plenty. Which once the system gets up and going, we should have plenty of this stuff. Okay, so now that we have our four experience chunks, what we want to make are these right here. Experience seeds. They're a tier four seed. We are going to have to tier these up. Uh, which isn't a problem. So let's pop over. And let's make our base crafting seeds. I know I have seeds. Oh no, you know what? I do not. Okay, there's a seed. Perfect. I don't know who's been over here with a crafting table, <laughs> but somebody has. Okay, so there is our base crafting seed. Our tier one seed. Our, um, oh, our tier two. We're going to have to do something here. Um, I don't know. I actually have the essence I need for that. Tier 3, we're not going to have the essence. But what we can do is we can grab this Supremium Essence that we've gotten. Uh, these, of course, come from killing... I actually need uh, one more of these. These, of course, come from killing Withers and other such bosses. So, And we're going to be getting really deep into Mystical Agriculture here fairly soon. So, Okay, and there is that. And then I'm actually going to need one more batch of that and then we can get our experience seeds these are right here it's easy as that to craft and by the way snowballs and blizzards let me see let me get some uh, void upgrades like just one of them yeah snowballs are already being voided so what I want to do is just add um, basically some of the stuff that can come from our mob systems over here with some void upgrades. So, there we go. Okay. So then what we're going to do is let's pop over... Um, these, I don't think they'll ever make extra seeds with Kaloshes. I'm going to go drop it in a Kalosh and let it run for a little while. We'll see if it makes extra seeds, but I think left click to break it is the only way for it to produce extra seeds, but I could be wrong. Um, actually, I'm going to need a piece of dirt. Four pieces of dirt to be exact. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to add dirt into our cloches, then we'll toss in our experience seeds, and this is going to start running. You can see that it grows pretty fast. And they don't take all that much power or anything like that either, so. Um, here in a second, it's going to get finished. There we go. And then it's going to basically break it down. We're going to get these experience essence. Um, or this experience essence. And I totally forgot about that. <laughs> um, what we're going to do with this is we're going to make experience droplets is what I want to make. Um, so I guess what I might do is pump this into a crafter right there and then pull it out to the frame drawer. So what we'll do is we'll pull that off right there. We'll toss on our crafter. And this is going to get power from those. That's fine. And what we'll do is, yeah, see there's experience essence coming into there. We're going to make a recipe here that says, if you take these like that, you're going to get that and apply. And then what we have to do is pull it out and basically feed it into this frame drawer. Because I just wanted to feed in experience droplets. Um, I'm going to have to go grab a servo. That's fine. I'm going to grab one of those in a second. I don't think, like I said, I don't think this is going to make additional seeds. I'm going to let it run for a minute and just see. But I don't think that it's going to. Okay, so there's eight experience droplets. You do get eight per craft, so it is quite, quite nice. So then if we were to drop this into there, you could see they're going to start pumping into the mechanical user. Experience gets made and it gets pumped up. Okay, um, and it does make a sizable amount of XP every time that it does that. Um, it should be enough to run this without issue. Like between, well, you know what, the reason this doesn't have anything in it is because it's not connected up. <laughs> There we go. Now it's connected up. It's getting fluid essence. Wonderful. Wonderful stuff. Okay. But anyways, this, this does produce a very decent amount of XP. And I doubt, I'm doubtful that we're going to be running this all the time. So it is going to eventually back up and then it'll be there for spurts of running. Uh, we will have four of these um, experience seeds is what I'm after. But let me grab this out because it doesn't seem to be making any additional, um, you know, any additional, uh, seeds and I'm going to take this servo and just put this onto there and say you can extract and feed into the drawer 
Um, we are going to have to do a redstone system to make sure this isn't overflowing and just dumping XP into the world, but uh, we'll probably do that next episode, I imagine. So what we're going to do with this is, let's come over and we'll just grab a stone hoe. It'll work for one piece of, piece of dirt, basically. Um, and then we need some kind of growth acceleration. We do have these, uh, these growth accelerators. Um, and do I really want to make more of those? Not really. Uh, well, we can make this. Yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to make a bunch of... Let me get... Oh, let's see. Let me get like three of these, and we'll just break these down into essence. We're going to start farming essence here soon enough, so... Okay, I'm just going to dump that into there. I'm not going to worry about those. Okay, let's get ourselves a bit of that. And we'll just grow this right here. Put our seed in, and... Right click. And basically what we have to do is just keep doing this. It's not very exciting. Um, we could do like a little automated system for it, but uh, it's not something, chances are not something that we're going to have to do all that often. So, And then eventually, it's like a 5% chance, but eventually it will net us additional seeds. You know, I've been doing this actually in uh, Rad Pack lately. There we go. We got two, two seeds that time. That's what we're after. We just need a total of four of these. And they should be, four of them should be plenty to run this system for us. So I think we've got enough magical fertilizer here to, to get what we want. But, And on the plus side, we'll have a bit of uh, experience essence to kind of jumpstart the system as well. So, Okay, there we go. We have four seeds now. Awesome. And we have a decent amount of essence built up. Okay, so let's pop down to the system here. And we'll just add these in. There you go. 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 And we can pump in like bone meal and stuff if we want to to kind of speed this up a little bit. Um, that is an option as well. But anyways, there's a bunch of experience droplets. And don't want to stand too close to that. I'm going to put glass around it. And there we go. This stuff's actually growing at a pretty decent rate. So... I don't think it's growing enough to have 100% uptime, but um, I would say that if we did like eight of these, we'd have like 100% just constant user activating for, uh, you know, making this essence stuff. So, um, but anyways, that stuff's pumping in now. And what we can do is let's go ahead and turn our mob crusher back on for right now. We're going to say always active. We are going to do a redstone si uh, system for this. So we have like, a couple different users that can accept items and you know kill the mob and like like I talked about last episode as well as um, you know just some different little redstone systems with screens we're gonna be getting into those I just want to get the XP system up and going and we're gonna say always active okay so this is gonna start spawning mobs for us there we go and you can see as soon as it gets spawned it dies and right, this thing's gonna kill it off pretty quickly and if we take a look inside the mob crusher you can see it's building up items at the moment um, it is making a little bit of fluid essence every time that it kills the mobs, and so then it's dumping it back into the system, and there it's just going to, uh, you know, to a duplicator or something. Um, and then eventually this back here, the fluid dictionary converter will back up. You can see there's a little bit of liquid XP. Um, ever so often it's coming through, but it is filling up inside of these fluid ducts. It can store like a bucket or two buckets or something like that, you know, per conduit. So. Uh, but anyways, that stuff's going to start building up for us. And so then what we're going to do is, um, let me pop over and, actually going to shut that off for just a second. I want to go get an ender chest. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to set up an ender chest right here, diamond locked. And then we're going to do an impulse item duct that just pulls out from the mob crusher. And reinforce servo. There we go. That does have power. Great. And you can see it's pulling all the items out. As simple as that. And then we've pretty much got the mob system done. And so I'm going to go ahead and just turn this back on for right now. And let that start spawning uh, blizzes. We should have plenty of blizzes coming in. Um, which also means that... Which that's going to be steadily building up. That's great. We'll get into the XP shower later. We'll do that as we do the expanded experience stuff. Um, but I am going to let this run for a bit and see how much XP is starting to build up and all that good stuff. Um, this should 
And this should all be chunk loaded, so we should be good on that. But I want to let this run for a little bit. Uh, one thing I do want to do, maybe, is let's pop up. Pop up to here. Let's take a look at Blizz Rods. We have 38 at the moment. And then we should have 39. <laughs> 39. Um, we can make Blizz Powder by just breaking this down by hand. There's the Pulverizer Method, the Fluid Trans... Well, um, and the Sag Meal. I'm actually probably just going to do it by hand. Um, just because... Okay, now we're up to 41. Uh, just because we're really not too concerned with that. So let's go ahead. Crafting Pattern. Let's say if you do that, you're going to get two of those. And then I think Cryothium is already in here. It is. That's great. And then what we're going to do, we now know how to make Cryothium. Oops. Uh, cryothium dust, which is just snowballs and redstone. Uh, we should have plenty of that stuff. So let's order ourselves. Go ahead and send me like 30 of that. And one thing I want to do is, if you recall, there was the, uh, the kits. Yeah, let's do the kits first. Let me go ahead and order some more patterns. Um, the signalum upgrade kit that took cryothium. And we weren't able to make it before. And did I ever teach us how to make electrum gears? I did not. So let me... Well, let me just go make one real quick. Getting cryothium and the upcoming stuff that we're going to be getting from the mob farm is going to, to be used in a lot of stuff. <laughs> it's going to make our lives a whole lot easier as well. So, um, let me go ahead and say that's how you make the signal upgrade kit. And then if you take four electrum and process it through, you'll get an electrum gear. So there is that. And then there's one other kit, the um, resonant upgrade kit that takes pyrothium. Okay, so let's go ahead and teach it uh, lumium gear. I don't think that we've taught it how to make lumium gears before. No. So let me order four more of that. So I can set up a quick recipe here. And we're going to make ourselves a lumium, lumium gear. Okay, so there's the resonant upgrade kit. And then a quick processing pattern. There's how you make the lumium gear. Okay. And then, let me drop these recipes in here real quick. Okay, and I want to teach you how to make the resonant conversion kit. And this, what this does is it basically takes it all the way up to just resonant level in one click. So we'll go ahead and say that's how you make it. Encode, and there we go. We can now make resonant conversion kits. And one other thing that I would like to teach it how to do is flux ducts. Um, these cryo-stabilized. And actually, I think we're going to be making these more than one at a time. Yeah, it's 500 millibuckets. Well, technically, that's just two gelid cryothium, though. So two gelid cryothium goes into the magma crucible, and it makes one. Yeah, that'll be fine. So we're going to get one of these and two cryo. Processing pattern, if you send this and that. And the rest of, the rest of automating this is just a lot of crafting recipes for the most part. It's very, very simple. And basically, it's going to send it to, which we're going to have to uh, set this up here, uh, these filters. So this one pumps in Lumium. You can also pump in Cryo. Uh, you can pump in the Cryo-stabilized Flux Ducts. Okay, and then what we'll do is, whoops, I meant to do this real quick. If this goes in the Magma Crucible, it's going to break it down. And this goes into there, we get a Cryo-stabilized Flux Duct. And... There we go. There's how you make that. Awesome. So we got a couple things automated today that are going to be awesome to have. Because we can go straight up to the top tier uh, thermal expansion machines. And we can also make the best power transfer um, in the game. As long as you don't need wireless or something like that. This is infinite, infinite transfer. It can move as much possible power as you can just feed into it. <laughs> so... Okay, so with that, I'm going to end out this episode here. Uh, next episode, we're going to continue on with our overall experience and mob system. Um, we are getting, you know, constant constant blizz rods coming in. There's no telling where we'll be at uh, by next episode. We're at 78 at the moment. Uh, if we pop down here and take just a really quick look at this system, you can see it's backed up on Essence. 
Uh, this isn't quite backing up just yet on experience, but that's because it does have a lot of a buffer uh, that it has to fill up. But we should see, by next episode, we should see some backup on this. And then what we'll be doing is setting up a redstone system so that if this thing does fill up with XP, or starts to fill up with XP, it's not just going to keep dumping XP into the world when it's not needed, you know. And then we get to start on all the redstone screen work to basically control all of our mob duplicators, our mob crusher, our added mob killing systems, and all that good stuff, and then expand on the amount of mobs that we have. Because I want to get basals, I want to get blazes, I want to get, uh, you know, a variety of mobs, and then maybe a mob uh, storage system, uh, like a mob dupli or a mob uh, imprisonment tool storage system, so we can search and grab it and everything. Um, but we'll get into that stuff. One thing I wanted to look at just really, really quickly. Nether stars. Um, it does appear that there is a nether essence. So I was debating if we need to automate withers or if we just need to go for this. And it looks as though this is not expensive at all. <laughs> no, this isn't really expensive at all. So um, we'll probably just go with this method. I mean, we do have to kill some withers here, but it's really not that many of them. Um, you know, 36 withers isn't really all that bad. So, yeah, we'll we'll start tack we'll start moving into that. We are going to have to get into a bit more astral sorcery to get our and altars, and we haven't even really started mystical agriculture because we're going to need to get mob farming up and going before we can make all that insanium stuff. Or not, I mean, essence farming, not mob farming. <laughs> uh, but anyways, we'll, we'll start getting into that. This is going to produce a little bit of essence passively, so that's good. Um, but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. And I hope to see you guys next time. So until then, as always, do take care, stay safe. I'll see you guys then.